at Ed Stone here, coach of Jared Ward of the 2019 Boston Marathon. Eighth place, 209.25. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. are you feeling right now? I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling really good. We checked off all the boxes that we were hoping to accomplish here. You know, first and foremost, we want to get that A standard, and we did it in both the time mm-hmm. by sub 211.30 and the place uh, in the top 10. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it needs to be top 10 because the time yeah, doesn't count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So, so actually, yeah, to get that was, was huge for him, plus he's got the, the sub-210 mark, yeah. um, which just for his own personal resume, I think, you know, people kind of, once you're uh, two, you know, 210 or faster, then that's kind of a different category than the you know, two, 211 plus. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, how important is that? Because that's been the storyline the last few years in American Marathoning. Rupp is the only guy on the yeah. 210. That's important? true. That's true. I mean, for us... Uh, I think we realize that the marathons that he's been running have been equivalent to uh, a sub-210 uh, effort for sure. Anytime you're finishing the top six at the Olympic Games, you know, you're know you a sub-210 guy on yeah. the right course. And it's just been a matter of uh, putting it together on the right day on the right course. And anytime you're bouncing between New York and Boston a couple of times, those traditionally without the pacing and, and just the way the, the difficulty of those courses does not necessarily lead to to one running their fastest time yeah so what did you see from him on the course what were you thinking watching him in terms of the moves he made where how he was yeah i was probably like you i was just i was in my hotel room just watching it so i um um so what i saw was just a typical jared ward sort of uh cerebral effort in that he knew that he was capable of running 210 uh, he was gauging how the pace was going at any given time. Uh, we saw him take some the lead there uh, a little before half. I think that was not intentional to break people. I think it was just more, I'm feeling good. I'm going to continue to run sub-210 pace regardless if these guys are dilly-dallying around. So um, so that was, that was nice, um, and it just told me that he's feeling pretty good. Now, once we hit the hills, you know, 16, 17, 18 miles, when he starts drifting off to the back of that pack, then you become a little bit concerned. But that's where it, that's where it does get difficult in the last 10 miles, specifically as you hit those hills around 16. So I thought he showed some grit. I talked to him briefly um, after the race, and he said he was feeling it towards the end of the hills, so coming up around mile 20, 21. But it felt like if he... And we had talked about this. If he could get through the hills in one piece, he's a good enough downhill runner that he can usually hold things together, and he's going to probably eat some people up over the last little bit. And that's why I think we saw him move from 10th or 11th into uh, eighth place towards the end. Yeah. When he takes the lead around halfway, are you, do you start dreaming, like, oh, this could be the day, or is that too early? What do you think when you see a guy it's, in front? Uh, I think he's feeling good, but it's the, we, we were not celebrating at that point in time other than the fact that, okay, he's towards the front of the pack. Uh, and let's be realistic. There's, uh, you know, you break the marathon into two equal halves, the first 20 miles and the last six. And so he got to the 20 mile mark um, in good enough position that he could use the downhills and, and the strength that he has in running downhill to hold things together. Are you surprised that 209.25 only got him eighth place today? Um, that's a good question. And, um, yeah, there is a part of me, that, you know, because traditionally I, I think I saw the stat that. Uh, that uh, 212 over the last 10 years or 11 years had usually been something that would, would put you in the top 10. Um, so, um, but the bottom line is we wanted to run sub 210. He ran sub 210. It got him eighth place. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and so we'll take it. Is that just a weight off your shoulders having, knowing he has the Olympic standard yes. going into yeah, this? Yeah, of course. It's one less hoop that we have to jump through. Yeah. It allows us some options in the fall, uh, whether he wants to run a marathon or just take a pass on a marathon, which I'd probably... I didn't say probably the latter, but uh, we'll also, it, again, it gives us options. Yeah, and he wasn't the only American under 210. No, Fabo was right there. Yeah, that was great. That was, that was fun to see him run yeah. so well as well. They have a little back and forth, and there's a whole BYU-Portland sort of uh, thing going in there, but they're they're very good friends. Um, and in fact, Paul went down to Flagstaff for a, a couple of weeks uh, back in, uh, I think it was December or January. Um, Jared did? Or? Yeah, Jared did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, and so, um, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a good thing, and it's a good day for American uh, marathoning, I think. Yeah. All right. Any other thoughts on the race? No, I'm just happy it's over. You know, you prepare, 
you work hard and then any number of things can go wrong. So when it all goes right, sometimes we take it for granted. Yeah. Uh, when it does go right, though, it means you're doing some things uh, correctly. And uh, now it's just hopefully lock and load and, and uh, get ready for the, for the trials. Yeah. All right. Well, nice round by Jim. Thanks. Thank you.